in a in a world where like everyone if they want to figure out how to do something they just go on youtube mm -hmm. how do you feel about lessons because i took guitar lessons the first couple of years i was playing right what's your take on it do you i mean are they worthwhile i think they i think they really are i think if you're serious about it it's like there's no substitute of like someone sitting in the room with you and just drilling you i think that is invaluable but it's also like really not easy to get like it, it it's the kind of thing where like we were so lucky because we had this great um music lessons place like down the road from our high school yeah. um and this awesome drum teacher pat patrillo running it and i was like like me and my parents were like oh sick like it's right there um so in that way it was really convenient like we were lucky enough to to the point where we could afford it. So um, I think that part of it is, is definitely not like, it's definitely tough. Um, but I think like, if you have the, the resources and the privilege to do that, and like, it's invaluable, you know what I mean? Um, I, I think you, it's not that you can't it, like, get the same results without it, but I, it, it helped me immensely. Yeah, did you ever do lessons, Eric? I was going to say, as someone who is entirely self-taught, I wish that I that I took lessons because I'd probably be a lot better. <laughs> no, you're but, sick. Uh, but like, it's, yeah, but I, but I would be better if I, if I took lessons. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that the, I think the other side of the coin, though, is that mm -hmm. if you take lessons, you think about things from a pretty, like, um, a relatively narrow-minded point of view with music like mm -hmm. you, you think like i gotta play in time i gotta yeah uh, uh uh catch these phrases you're thinking very like very much like a player in an orchestra if that makes sense mm -hmm. um but like i think without that without lessons i feel like so many of the people i've met including you eric have a much more broader view of music in general you're like I, I'm not just necessarily like one musician out of many in this ensemble. You're like, oh, like we should like jam, like just play some in free form. We should like just write this stuff ourselves. And like, I think you're much more open to like cool creative ideas if you have that um, more open-minded mindset. Mm -hmm. So like that's something always... that I wish I had. It's always really fun to try and um, describe like a part of a song to you. Like when we're when we're either writing a song or like practicing something out, I'll be like, "Oh, um, how about at that part where we do that thing? How about you do this thing instead of that thing?" <laughs> yeah, I have no idea any words <laughs> to use. I'm just I, I'm like a caveman trying to trying to describe something. I always get a kick <laughs> out of it. And and you're you're usually pretty good at knowing what I'm talking about. So <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Is that I like appreciate that you don't need to know the language exactly <laughs> to know to pick up what someone else is putting down you know yeah. i mean it, mm -hmm. it's not that it doesn't help but it's like you don't need it so but i think <laughs> i think you hit the nail right on the head david because i talk about this regarding jake a lot because jake is all self-taught and mm -hmm. he just started writing music on a whim like never studied music theory or anything like that and yeah his outlook is so much more is so different than mine because when I'm writing a song, I'm painstaking about, you know, like, is it in the same key? Can it follow this? Is it all in the same tempo? And Jake will just write something and it'll sound great. And then I'll go and try and transcribe and figure out what he's doing. And like, he's not, he's never just playing like a normal G chord. Like he added yeah. something just because it sounded good. And his, I'm always just like, that's against the rules, but he doesn't <laughs> even know the rules. So who cares? Exactly. Rock and roll has no rules yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah. Like, so... That's what I love is that like, I, I feel like a, a lot of times like uh, you and me will think about like, okay, this is a G chord in the G shape and then it goes to an A chord in the A shape, you know, like, like that's how we think about guitar, but Jake's like, okay, here's like the main riff. I don't know. Like, this is yeah. just the riff. I know it sounds good. Yeah. And my like, guitar makes a cool noise when my fingers look like this. It, but like, that is like, <laughs> like you he's not like pigeonholing himself to like, well, this yeah. is the shape of a G chord, you know, like it's, yeah. and then like you, 
without even really thinking about it, like I might, like he's come up with a, a, a chord that I wouldn't use. That sure. sounds it's like Bob stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> sick. Yeah. And it's, I mean, as a songwriter myself, it's inspired me to, you know, throw away everything that I know and just find what sounds good. Exactly. Which is interesting. So. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, go, no, finish your thoughts. Sorry. I was just going to say, it's like, I think the perfect combo is like recognizing both sides of the coin and kind of like, this is a, a skill in itself, but like trying to put on a different hat of like, okay, let me like read notes now. Okay. Sure. Let, let me just turn my brain off and just play what sounds good now, you know? For sure. Eric, you too. What everything, all the good things I just said about Jake, it's the same for you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll write that on a Hallmark card for you. <laughs> I guess, like, I, all the, all the, the lessons, lessons that I've taken is just like, just YouTube, YouTube videos yeah. on, on music theory that I, that I try my best to, to comprehend <laughs> and, and put into practice, but I've never actually like, yeah. not since like elementary school have I sat down with like a, a music teacher someone to actually teach me along all the all the training especially early on like i would just sit down on youtube and and just watch watch like just free lessons on on stuff like that and try my best to to figure yeah. it out on my own i will say this maybe eric you can have, say some something to support this or not i my my little brother when i was first picking up guitar he was picking up the drums so we had a drum set in my uh in my house and he kind of stopped doing drums he was taking lessons at the same place you were David and once he stopped playing I started getting into the drums because I was writing um, music and so I was just teaching myself and then my mom mentioned that I guess we had like prepaid for like a handful of lessons with with Pat over at the music place and she wanted to know if I wanted to go take them and so I did and I thought it was such a worthwhile experience because he's like everything you're doing is wrong. <laughs> like the way you're holding the sticks, everything, like it is just flat out wrong. And I've always known the saying, like practice doesn't make perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. So he's able to kind of get me out of like bad habits I could have fallen into. Um, mm -hmm. And so I feel like if I'm just learning on YouTube, no one's looking over my shoulder to make sure that I'm doing things perfect. Eric, you get such a sick, amazing sound out of your bass. You taught yourself how to do slap and everything. Like, what? What are like? What's your outlook on that? Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like bass and drum are pretty pretty different in that regard. Well, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't That's know because there's just there's so many there's so many ways to. I feel like there's lots of different ways to play a bass, whereas there's there's only like a few, especially like like trained ways to play a drum you know what i mean sure yeah Touché. <laughs> i think like like um bass like it's certainly like like drums it, it's like a whole dance you know it's like all the mm -hmm. movement like so there's so many kind of precise movements that you can analyze mm -hmm. and i, I think yeah. bass yeah it's definitely harder in that way mm -hmm. um and I would usually just watch, like, just watch concerts of, of bands I liked. I would, I would watch, I would, I remember the first, the first song I ever learned in full, I was, was, I got a feeling by the Beatles and I would, I would watch, I was like 14 or 15 and I'd watch that rooftop video and I would just watch <laughs> what Paul McCartney was doing and I would, I would try my best to kind of like, to kind of, to kind of copy him. And That's then, its and own then as, education. As my, as my music tastes and everything and everything grew and expanded, I'd be watching other people. And that's, I kind of never, never uh, stuck to one technique or another. I would, you know, I'd, I'd play a pick for, for some songs. I'd try and uh, like Chris Squire on, from Yes, just that, that, that rip and pick sound. I always tried to, to figure out what he was doing. And then stuff like Getty Lee with his, with his really fast fingers, stuff like that. I don't know. I just like to, to try it all. I never really wanted to to uh, to just be stuck with one with one way to play it. I always like to try and play it in 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 every way. I love that. Like, yeah, that's versatility. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, and that's the Beatles. I've got a feeling, which is a cover of the Black Eyed Peas. I've got a feeling. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They actually little known fact. They, it wasn't a cover. They just straight up ripped it off. That you know. 
that sucks. Yeah, uh, there was Paul McCartney gave no credit to Will I Am, Fergie, uh, Apple D App, or Tebu. You know what? That's so him, though. That is so him. <laughs> I you said those other two names, and the, you could have said anything, <laughs> and I would have believed you. <laughs> That's not Will, fair. Will I Am, Fergie, Ronald McDonald, Orange Juice. <laughs> Orange Juice. and OJ. Fridge magnet. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because everyone's like. No respect like, for fridge magnet out here. It's I sad. Know. That's funny because everyone forgets George in the Beatles, but in Black Eyed Peas, you forget just like those other two guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so Taboo and Apple D app are the are the George. I'm not done with this. <laughs> Apple okay, D no, app finish, and, finish it. <laughs> Apple D app and Taboo are the George Harrison of Black Eyed Peas. There, I said it. <laughs> well, don't they, they? Didn't they both go off to have attempt solo careers? Uh, <laughs> Come on, man. My my knowledge of them is strictly Black Eyed Peas based. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. That's I just know Boom Boom Pow. That's it. Okay, so I'm a B. Come on, man. Monkey Business is album of the century. <laughs>